Hi, this is News and Views. Thank you for joining us. My name is Renee Ng, and today um, we have a show that's very important for all of us because it's about food security, having healthy food and food security. As, as we all know, 90% of our food comes from the, from, is imported. And you know, if we ever have another hurricane, another tsunami over here, another earthquake, that you know does plays havoc with the infrastructure or even if they have another on the west coast where they ship a lot of our food in uh, have another earthquake the way they in the 1980s as an island we need to have food security for now and and for the future uh, for future generations and because of that we have a show today on healthy foods and food security and with me again is Dr. Hector Valenzuela, thank you so much for coming in on a Sunday again to talk about a topic I know is near and dear to your heart, food and food security and agroecology, which you'll explain later. So anyway, you know, before we start, can you give the audience uh, a short introduction of yourself um, before we start the show? Yeah. Thanks, Renee, and th thank you for ha having me again in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a, a professor at uh, UH Manoa, Manoa, the College of Agriculture, mm -hmm. and I uh, develop educational programs uh, to help uh, local uh, crop producers, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, to develop educational programs on organic and sustainable agricultural systems. Mm -hmm. Great. All stuff we really need here. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, and today's show about healthy food, part two, is about food security. And um, the governor has said that he would like the state to be, to have food security, to know that we have all the food that we need being grown here by the year 2030. And um, to introduce that topic, maybe we should talk a little about last month's show, which is was about GMOs and um, how it affected the food security and the healthy food situation condition here. So Hawaii, what we are experiencing in Hawaii is a reflection of what many communities all over the world are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's two angles that they're looking at. One of them is how can we prepare for the future to feed ourselves? And the other angle is climate change is coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, so how are we going to manage our land or agricultural systems and be able to survive uh, despite uh, climate change? Mm -hmm. uh, last year we had a, a, a couple of shows in, in the you program mm -hmm. and the first one was an introduction to organic farming which where we covered some of the basics, what is organic farming, uh, how do you become certified and so on. And the second show we talked about G GMOs right. Uh, and we talked about it, I think, because back in the 90s, leaders in our state said, uh, this is the future of agriculture in Hawaii. Uh, so now we're kind of re revisiting the whole issue because it was almost like a bridge uh, to nowhere mm -hmm. uh, and saying there were some concerns about GMOs. And there's an international consensus saying we should look at alternative farming systems, such mm -hmm. as organics or agroecology. So if we could just briefly um, cover some of the what we discussed about. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so just as a review, these are some of the concerns based on studies on animals mm -hmm. showing that there's problems, health effect, adverse effects mm -hmm. on some of the organs of the body, mm -hmm. uh, such as the divest digestive system, mm -hmm. the liver, the pancreas, mm -hmm. the kidneys, and the blood. Mm -hmm. uh, while these studies are not conclusive, they raise a red flag saying, you know, we should look at this more carefully. Mm -hmm before we continue to consume these products as a, as a, as a community. Mm -hmm. and, and there's also a concern about the pesticides that are used as part of the production of GMOs. Uh, so the, the following slide also shows that with respect to pesticides, there's also a range of concerns. Uh, uh, if we are exposed to them on the farm mm -hmm. or uh, if we consume, if there are residues in the food that we are consuming. Oh, right, right. Uh, so just in the slide here is just uh, the example of Roundup. 
mm -hmm. uh, which is used extensively with genetically modified crops, as we talked last time. Uh, so with Roundup, some of the research shows uh, problems with uh, potential birth defects, mm -hmm. uh, the death of the embryo or the fetus, mm -hmm. uh, problems with the lung, the mm -hmm. kidney, uh, skeletal malformations, and more recently there's been a, the United Nations made a, a conclusive uh, evidence of uh, problems with po possible ca carcinogenicity, mm -hmm. uh, problems with cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is why uh, recent studies are saying, you know, we should probably f focus more on uh, organic farming or ecological farming uh, as a way to address issues of uh, food security. And perfect time. Could you tell us what agroecological farming is? <laughs> uh, so agroecology is a, is a concept that uh, bases it, its knowledge on indigenous knowledge uh, from traditional cultures like Hawaiians, how they farm for 2,000 years, mm -hmm. uh, the Mayas, uh, the indigenous cultures in Africa, Latin America, mm -hmm. and they merge modern science uh, such as ecology, agronomy, horticulture, and the social sciences to develop uh, uh, a system of agriculture based on basic principles uh, to develop healthy production systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so organic farming is uh, a way of farming ecologically, uh, and so it is part of uh, agroecology as well. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about the 2017 UN study and 20, 2008 UN studies that were showing um, well, you can explain. <laughs> so there's scientists that are getting together and saying, how can we continue to produce uh, food mm -hmm. uh, with dealing with climate change and food security? Uh, so the rec most recent study was the uh, report from the United Nations, uh, a report on the right to food. And this report is saying, yes, we should consider alternative methods of farming, agroecology, agri uh, and they are with the current techniques that we have, we are able to produce sufficient food uh, to feed ourselves without hurting the environment. Mm -hmm. and, the re and basically have food security, handle the food security issue. Uh, we don't need the GMOs, which w some GMO um, advocates were claiming before that we had to have it. Right. Mm -hmm. And the problem of GMOs includes that it's based on large-scale monocultures, mm -hmm. which really damage biodiversity, uh, that it is based on high input farming, and that means you have to purchase a lot of inputs based on uh, f fossil fuels. You have to purchase pesticides, pesticides <laughs> chemical fertilizers. <laughs> so basically, small farmers especially become indebted. Mm -hmm. to, they have to make a lot of purchases. Uh, so they have to get a lot of loans, and on top of that, you have the uh, environmental issues mm -hmm. of pollution, polluting mm -hmm. the environment, and then the health issues on top of that. Yes, I remember uh, all of this in, in, in my college days. They were saying that um, th this, these, this new way of farming was absolutely necessary to feed the world. Right. And what the UN is showing now is that no, they are not. Anyway, maybe we could move to the, our, our first topic, which was um, uh, the Victory Gardens uh, of World War II. At one time, um, the whole of the United States was very uh, focused on creating food because of the war situation. And in Hawaii, um, because we're an island and with all the vulnerabilities of being on an island so far away from everyone, uh, we also created an in incredibly effective agricultural system here. Um, could you? Tell us about that. Right. So uh, it, it seems like uh, there's been a call in Hawaii for us to become sustainable for, for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Like the community has been saying, we need to feed ourselves. We need to take care of our land and protect it for the future. And, and the governor, Governor Ige, uh, about a year and a half ago, made a goal for the state mm -hmm. to double its food production. Uh, by the year 2020 or 2030, mm -hmm. uh, but a year and a half later, we haven't seen a lot of real concrete steps. Uh, so some people have said, why don't we follow the approach of Victory Gardens? Mm -hmm. And Victory Gardens, both during World War I and World War II, the community got together and said, we as a community are going to start and get engaged 
in local food production. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a very strong movement on a, for a community standpoint, in, and it was very effective. Uh, nationally in the United States, uh, about 20 million families uh, got involved, and at one point, uh, the country was producing about 45% of the food consumed locally. Uh, so we did the same in thing. In Victory Gardens. Yeah, with the wow. Victory Gardens. <laughs> and in Hawaii, we did the same. Uh -huh. uh, so within a few years, we doubled the production of some crops like potatoes, beans, lettuce, taro. So uh, in Hawaii, we were able to engage uh, a lot of agencies within the state mm -hmm. were able to get together and say, how can we start to produce our own food within a couple of years? Mm -hmm. And in this slide here, we mm -hmm. see uh, uh, an, an example of the uh, uh, Victory Garden at, uh, uh, in, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so on Kauai, in Hawaii, uh -huh. in McKin oh, in this, Hawaii. This McKinley High School oh, here, McKinley here in Hawaii. High School. <laughs> right, right. Uh, oh. So there's a call of saying, why cannot we again go back to a to get everybody together, mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Agriculture, the College of Agriculture, uh, because at the time we started to produce a lot of real practical information mm -hmm. uh, that we have engaged, f learned from the early 19, uh, 1900s about how mm -hmm. to farm, mm -hmm. and we put it on paper. This, mm -hmm. this is the proper way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this next slide is just an example of one of the many publications that we came up with, practical mm -hmm. information mm -hmm. to help gardeners, farmers, to be more effective at uh, mm -hmm. uh, local production. Uh, one interesting angle is that uh, so this is uh, Home Garden in Hawaii. It's about 150 pages mm -hmm. with real practical information. How do you mm -hmm. grow tomatoes? How do you grow taro and so on mm -hmm. uh, to help mm. the community? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that at first the military tried to let's put up plantation style, large scale farm for growing food. Mm -hmm. And those programs really weren't effective. Mm -hmm. So they realized we really need to go small scale. Mm -hmm. We got to get at the garden level, at the mm -hmm. small farm scale, mm -hmm. and those farm small scale approaches were a lot more effective mm -hmm. uh, to, produ to increase mm -hmm. production within a couple of years mm -hmm. in Hawaii. And this is the Department of Agriculture and the UH Department of Agriculture <laughs> um, working together. Right, uh -huh. right. So I, uh -huh. I imagine that there was many agencies in mm -hmm. Hawaii, so mm -hmm. everybody pretty much got together and say, how can we develop local food production programs. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So people reminisce and say, we, can, we have done it before, and we can do it again. Mm -hmm. And apparently, um, in our prep meeting, we were talking about they developed this whole infrastructure um, to create food security at that time during the war. Could you, could you talk about that triad, or what do you call it, triangle? Mm -hmm. The approach to increase food production? Uh. Uh, so, uh, at, at, in Hawaii, UH uh, was created over 100 years ago, the Land Grant University, mm -hmm. and the specific purpose was to help the local family farm in the state. Oh, uh, really? So they put a university on each state, mm -hmm. and Manoa was the Land Grant University for mm -hmm. Hawaii. So for many years, we had developed, started to develop information, how can we develop crops for Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, how can we develop technology to grow these crops more effectively in the state, how to grow them in the different islands. Mm -hmm. uh, so when World War II came about, we already had that inform a lot of oh. that information together. Uh -huh. uh, so it was a matter of for us to put all that information together and say, to show home gardeners and farmers how to mm -hmm. do it most effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, so the approach uh, for today would follow a similar time of uh, approach of using how can we develop research and information and make it accessible to our communities throughout the state. Uh -huh. You were uh, talking uh, about research, extension services, and teaching students, training students in farming methods. Could you I expand on that a little bit? Uh, the university has uh, functions on a, as, as a base of a triangle. Uh, has main three three main legs on the stool. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is to develop to conduct research. Uh, so this is where you go to the farms and say, how can I best grow tomatoes? What is the the best ways to grow it? Mm -hmm. uh, we have another angle where we use this information and we take it to the public, 
and this is part of to the, the farmers. to the farmer mm -hmm. to the farmers and this is mm -hmm. part of the extension service right your best practices that you find are the most effective you disseminate it to everyone right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and the As a public service the third leg of the stool is education instruction mm -hmm. for our students mm -hmm. uh, so we can educate future farmers of the, Hawaii <laughs> yeah we can educate the future farmers of Hawaii or mm -hmm. workers in the DOA and uh -huh. the workers at the state uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so those kind of f form the base uh, to promote agriculture in, in the long term in the state mm -hmm. uh, so the, the the new call for agroecology is how how can we get all these pieces together uh, to most effectively develop uh, sustainable farming systems mm -hmm. in, diversified, in, in Hawaii. Right. Diversified sustainable systems that are um, compatible with the local uh, conditions. Right, uh -huh, right. Uh -huh. So the, the basic message is if, if we develop another Victory Gardens in Hawaii, mm -hmm. uh, if we are going to become uh, double food production in the state, yeah. Have we, food security, right. right. We uh -huh. really need to develop a roadmap. Uh, mm -hmm. We really need to get everybody together and say, how will this actually happen? Uh, so we have very good farmers in the state. They are very good at growing all c kinds of crops, but there's many angles that need to be put together. I call them pieces of the puzzle, uh, distribution systems, uh, mm -hmm. centers, uh, marketing, right. marketing uh, programs. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so we need to put all, those, all these pieces together. Mm -hmm. uh, to so they can clean their crops, prayer, prep their crops, crops, get them to market, right. have a marketing strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need, as, as part of this agenda, to double of food production, we need to put all these pieces of the puzzle together. The infrastructure. Uh, to mm -hmm. add the infrastructure to actually mm -hmm. uh, make it happen. Mm -hmm. And the state actually had, with the GACC, I can't remember what that means, but anyway, they had a role in, in um, helping to develop this infrastructure either also. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so during the, um, I, I mentioned during the first part of, of last the last century, uh, we started to do a lot of real practical mm -hmm. uh, research. And uh, during the 1950s, 1960s, we actually had uh, several breeders at UH that were developing new varieties. Mm -hmm. uh, we had several fruit breeders that were bringing a lot of uh, fruit varieties from all over the world. So it was kind of like the golden age uh, mm -hmm. for UH because mm -hmm. we had all this research and information yeah. to help local uh, local agriculture. Oh, right. Uh, and uh, the slide here shows an example of some of the varieties that we, uh -huh. we were developing uh -huh. at the time. <clears throat> so this is just some of the work back in the uh, 1950s and 60s. Uh, we were developing the new lettuce varieties, new sweet potato varieties, tomato, cauliflower, uh, onions, so o a whole range of, of crops. Mm. Uh, and if you buy mm -hmm. seed today from the seed lab, mm -hmm. these are varieties that, that were developed back in those days. Uh, so as we talk today about increasing food production, we're saying, can we bring back that golden age mm -hmm. at UH where we de we're developing a lot of practical uh, mm -hmm. information. With, with uh, local farmers who have right, right. experience on the right. land. Uh -huh. uh, because as you know, uh, the universities have been in, in a way uh, privatized. Uh, there's a, uh, there's mm -hmm. a trend to get more grants for money and to do more research in the laboratory. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're not doing as much work in the field mm -hmm as we used to do in the old days. Mm -hmm. So today we don't have the breeders that we used to have in the old days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, can we move to another, uh, as another part of agroecology, agro um, agroecology in, in the world and in Hawaii as it exists today, um, can you give us some kind of idea we're, get, we're getting closer to the second half of our, sh we're in the second half of our show right now. Can you give us an idea of what there is out there right now? Uh, agroecology is a new uh, uh, system of, of farming mm -hmm. that, it is, that is community based and it is based on uh, farming of ecological principles about proper farming that minimizes the use of external inputs. Uh, pesticides. <laughs> right, and pesticides, and pesticides and chemicals. And, and, using, and chemicals. Uh -huh. Using locally available uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, uh, 
in the world, we have about a, a one and a half billion farmers uh, farming on about 350 uh, million farms. So these are basically uh, small farmers. Mm -hmm. They use about 20% of the land, but they feed about 60 to 70% of, wow. the, of the world population. 60 to 70% of the world's population right. on 20% of the land. Right. That sounds pretty effective to me. Right. On, <laughs> on the other hand, we mm -hmm. have conventional farming, which uses about 70% of the land, uh, uses the percent of the water uh, and the energy uh, to grow food, but it only feeds about percent of the population. Are you talking about the agribusinesses now? Yeah, conventional, yes, indu conventional indu industrial, industrial farming. Industrial farming. Right. So the concept of agroecology is to help these small farmers, which don't have a, a lot of resources available, mm -hmm. using ecological principles uh, and indigenous knowledge to improve their production systems. Mm -hmm. uh, agroecology has been around for about 35 years and it has shown to be very effective and to increase productivity of mm -hmm. small farms without relying on these uh, external inputs. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is why there's these uh, large scientific panels that have come together and say, we need to develop resilient systems that can withstand the effects of uh, climate change, mm -hmm. just as we saw recently in Kauai, rainfall, droughts that we have experienced mm -hmm. over the past 15 years in Hawaii, small-scale farms mm -hmm. that follow agroecological agro principles are a lot more resilient mm -hmm. and able to withstand this type of mm -hmm. environmental impacts. So can we move now to the practical issues that um, need to be addressed in order to move to a more resilient, more effective, and um, probably more productive way of farming? Uh, so the the more practical issues go along the lines of the Victory Garden issue. How can mm -hmm. we actually make it work? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a whole new generation of young people that are really interested in the environment. That's great. They're interested in farming. Mm -hmm. They're really mm -hmm. into organics and mm -hmm. nutrition, healthy mm -hmm. food. Right. And even about spiritual issues mm -hmm. like dying with the, with the air, with the land. Mm -hmm. And there's also a resurgence of indigenous values, the indigenous mm -hmm. culture. Mm -hmm. uh, so can one, how can we put together all this energy to make, make it work? Mm -hmm. uh, so then we need more practical, a practical roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we have land accessible for the young people so they can farm? Mm -hmm. uh, how can we make credit available to farmers so that they can get started with an acre, two acres of land and start growing local food production. Mm -hmm. uh, once they grow the food, how can we develop distribution centers and develop the marketing channels so that all this new food system mm -hmm. can reach from farm to the table. Mm -hmm. Or uh, and person was saying that we need affordable agricultural land with long lease time. Uh, and I mentioned that and you we're saying that, yes, that's especially true for organic. Right, right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also sh has a, a social or political component, which these production systems have to be based on the rights of the community to have food, to have access to land, mm -hmm. and to uh, have what is called food sovereignty, where the community can say, we want to grow taro, we want to respect the production of sweet potato, traditional crops. Mm -hmm and we have to develop community food systems that are based on what the community needs mm -hmm, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and wants. Yes, and, and we were mentioning in the prep meeting one of the things we need to concentrate on is maintaining the best ag lands for agriculture, for farming, which is really a government responsibility to make sure that the, you know, that the whole people of Hawaii have the food security that we need. Right. Uh -huh. Uh, so today in Hawaii, we're working within a framework of uh, many interests. We, we have the developers, we have the mm -hmm. land plantation owners, mm -hmm. the land, land, land owners. Mm -hmm. So as we envision new agricultural systems in Hawaii, can we break the mold of the All Boys Network mm -hmm. to start to make land available and agricultural systems that are really truly owned by the community? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, it's a difficult challenge. Yes, it is. But right. you were saying just a few minutes ago that we have very 
experienced people here that we can begin to um, get together uh, to develop this strategy. Could you expand on that, please? Uh, so we do have uh, some of the best farmers in the world. Uh, we have indigenous Hawaiians know a lot about the land, about the landscape, mm -hmm. about the hupua, hupua system. Mm -hmm. The weather, the soil conditions, right, and right. all of the things that go into making a farm. Right. Mm -hmm. We have multi-generational multi farmers in mm -hmm. Hawaii of uh, uh, ancestry from Japan, mm -hmm. China, from the Pacific area mm -hmm. that have what is called my almost millennial knowledge about pro pro millennial knowledge, uh, multi-generational knowledge. Oh, oh, millennial. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, and they are very good at, at farming in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a lot of the, 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 the capital, the social capital mm -hmm. and resources available locally. Mm -hmm. uh, we're obviously in a tropical environment where mm -hmm. we have a lot of local resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a lot of the pieces that are needed mm -hmm to make this, this yes. movement go forward. So that if um, th the state is able to get these people together to, to have them combine, put all their heads together and combine their knowledge so that we can create a strategy um, from the bottom up, you right, know, right. Uh, with taking into account our situation here we have the people to do this, and Hawaii has a huge market for locally grown food, for, for the restaurants and residents, of course, and also you were mentioning farm to school, which, which would be another huge market. And another point that the uh, United Nations uh, Right to Food report made uh, mm -hmm. that just came out last year is that as we develop policies, we have to make sure that we're not overduly influenced by big business, by big uh, chemical like companies, industrial, in, yeah. industrial agriculture, agriculture that and are, uh, GMO, right, um, right, agriculture. Right. Uh -huh. So I, I know they are entrenched in the with the local legal system, mm -hmm. but as commu as communities, we have to make sure that we develop policies that are not um, mm -hmm. by, uh, these large companies that are mm -hmm. trying to. But uh, more in along the lines along the lines of what the community needs and right. in the last half minute is there anything you would like to say uh, we have a lot of potential in Hawaii we have mm -hmm. a lot of young farmers with a lot of energy mm -hmm. uh, but we do need to bring the mentality of the Victory Gardens to work as a community as a state mm -hmm. uh, to increase local food production mm -hmm. and can do right. <laughs> we can do it yes. done it before we can do it again definitely uh-huh yes and um, Thank you so much for coming back and talking to us about this really important. Topic. Thanks for inviting me. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah, the li I think the leafy crops, like arugula and stuff. Like you a, don't like arugula. You don't? Oh, oh, man. No, it's uh, too bitter. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, can, yeah, can you grow something on a lanai? I think so. I think so. With five hours of sunshine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Unfortunately, we, I heard tomatoes are really easy, but we can't eat. Allergic to no, all the nightshades. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Yeah, the fruit.